Hi, I'm Dave Littell, and I'm here today with Bob Klein and Colin Slabach, and we're going to talk about challenges of Roth conversions after the elimination of recharacterization. So, Bob, this elimination of recharacterization, you know, I'm not a practitioner, but I've thought about how this must complicate Roth conversions for practitioners because now you can't undo it. And there were several reasons you might undo a Roth conversion, but that opportunity is gone. Does, does it really cause any difficulties for you in your practice? Not for me personally, but I think for the practitioner who wasn't doing several tax projections during the year and and you know, relied on the recharacterization to undo the Roth conversion, it could cause additional considerations for that person to really focus on tax planning before making that final Roth IRA conversion recommendation. So let's talk about that a little more because you're a little bit unique. You're both a financial planner and an accountant and you do a lot of complex tax planning. So before the end of the year, you have to do the Roth conversion before the end of the calendar year. You were well prepared for that. So you've never really relied in your own practice on recharacterization as a way to, you know, you didn't know what the tax situation was at the end of the year and you had to fix it by undoing the transaction, right? So that's what you're really saying. Yeah. In terms of relying on it, it's kind of like a recharacterization used to be an insurance policy. But like you said, I've always done tax planning and furthermore, for clients that I recommend Roth IRA conversions, a lot of times we start the tax planning sooner than later. We'll do an initial projection. I just had a situation with a client who sold a rental property and had a lot of unused passive loss carry forwards and had favorable capital gains consequences. Mm -hmm. And we knew that transaction was going to happen sometime in the fall, but we wanted to start planning for it. So in June, we did a tax projection. By the way, he also has a large tax credit that he'll receive from solar energy. Mm -hmm. So that helps his situation as well. So the point is we started doing tax planning in June and then just last week after he finally sold the property, we finalized the planning and included in that two cases, one with no conversion, another one with a Roth conversion happened to be $75,000 and that's the direction he's going to go. And that's the way I've really thought about this is that like now after this rule change there's much more premium on tax planning and, and it's always been part of your practice but for others who may have not been that that well organized uh, now they have to be because of the inability to do the recharacterization. Yeah premium on the tax planning itself and also premium on thinking more about Roth IRA conversions and what they really mean in a client situation. And yeah, it's important to do the tax planning, but also focus on the long-term implications of a Roth IRA conversion. Now, when are you doing these Roth conversions? Because if you can't recharacterize back, isn't it better to wait? Because if someone is in more of a volatile business and they could have a higher income that they don't know about coming later this year, it'd be better almost to wait. Are you seeing trends towards a later conversion of assets? just depends in terms of their situation and also what's going on in the stock market. If the stock market is in a downward trend, you know, you want to do it later than sooner, presumably. But you want to, in a lot of cases, start the tax planning in any event early in the year and potentially do multiple conversions within a single year. You might want to break it up into chunks. So once again, it depends upon a person's situation. So can you talk a little bit more about what you're doing when the market is trending down? Sure. There's no guarantees it's going to keep trending down. However, that's a potential opportunity for breaking up your Roth IRA conversion within a year to two or three smaller conversions. However, that's one situation when you would do that. You might not have all the facts at hand if you do a Roth IRA conversion earlier in the year that you would later in the year. So that could be a, another reason for breaking up a Roth IRA conversion into a, a few different chunks as well. So Bob, as we talk about trends in the market, the market you know, moving down or up, um, let's talk about one other way people were using Roth recharacterizations. So at the end of the year, you do a conversion, and then the market goes down after the end of the year. You, what you got to do is undo that transaction. So if it was worth 150000 and now it's worth 100000 Instead of paying taxes on 150,000, you could later recharacterize and then redo the transaction at the lower market rate. Well, now we can't do that anymore. Does that does that 
feel like an important loss of an opportunity, or how do you deal with that? It could be, for if you look at it just strictly in terms of short term, that you had the ability to pay less tax liability. However, what I found happened in some situations is people lost their appetite for doing another Roth IRA conversion. It's hard to get clients to do these things. So to get them to undo it and then do it again type of thing. And also, I look at it from a potential liability point of view. Just because the market's gone down in the short term doesn't mean that you should undo that conversion necessarily, even though you'll, in that particular year, possibly pay less taxes. You can't time the market, so you may not predict when the best time is to redo that Roth conversion. And so in the long term, it could hurt you. Yeah, it seems to me you've said that you didn't ever really rely on that very much. And, and that was partially, I, I mean, it's an interesting point that like you tell somebody to undo it and then they wouldn't do it again because they've lost their appetite for it. That's, that's a, a interesting uh, part of human nature, I guess. And you talked about liability. I feel on the other side, there might be a liability issue that it's just now more important to tell people that they're going to pay taxes on the value at the time of the conversion because they may on their own realize that later when they're actually paying their taxes you know that the value is lower so they just need to understand the consequences i think there there needs to be a lot of communication about that maybe even more than before yeah that's a great point dave and you know just the fact that it's worth paying the taxes in many situations that's what clients get hung up on, you know, why should I be paying these taxes? Yeah, so you don't want to set up any barriers. For, once you've convinced them to do it, you want them just to do it, right? <laughs> exactly. So, all right, good. That's great stuff. Thanks. Thank you. This video was made possible by the New York Life Center for Retirement Income.